St. Mary's College, the 2020 commencement ceremony. Please rise for the national anthem and please remain standing after the invocation. The national anthem will be sung by Brianna Kinyanjui, class of 2021, who is stepping in for your classmate, Reagan Stoller, who due to unforeseen circumstances was unable to attend. Good afternoon. I'm Gretchen Flicker, Chair of the Board of Trustees of St. Mary's College. It is my privilege to welcome you to our commencement ceremony for the Class of 2020. <laughs> commencement is always a day of mixed emotions. And for you, graduates of the Class of 2020, whose culmination of your college career was cut short, I am sure you are experiencing many emotions today. As so, I hope you not only enjoy and celebrate the successes and achievements of your time at St. Mary's and of the last two years, but you also remember and thank those who are celebrating with you, your family, friends, and members of the St. Mary's community who helped you on your life journey thus far. We will now begin our ceremony with the invocation. God of all people, we gather today to remember what you have done in our lives and to celebrate a milestone in the lives of the graduates of St. Mary's College. We give you thanks for the graces you have bestowed upon the class of 2020. May each graduate here today remember that their Holy Cross education has prepared them to make a difference in the world. We pray in gratitude for the Sisters of the Holy Cross, our founders and sponsors, for all families who have made this education possible, and for all trustees, faculty, and staff who support the mission of the college. Spirit of wisdom, guide these graduates to continue to use their St. Mary's education to be a strong presence in the world, to signal another way of being, and to always act with integrity. Filled with the compassionate and courageous heart of Mary, may we all share in the vision to make God present in all that we do to build your kingdom. We ask this through our God, amen. Please be seated. Well, good afternoon. I'm Katie Conboy, president of St. Mary's College, and I too welcome you to the St. Mary's College commencement ceremonies for the class of 2020. 
As we begin, I'd like to read the college's land acknowledgement statement. We wish to acknowledge and honor the native people and their traditional homelands on which we stand today. We particularly recognize the Pokagon Band of Potawatomi and the Miami, who have been utilizing this land and its resources for many years and continue to do so today. With deep gratitude, we acknowledge the native people and their culture within our community, as well as acknowledging this land upon which we gather, pray, learn, and work. Graduates and honored guests, you have waited a long time for this day, which represents your hard work as students and so many sacrifices on the part of your families. It's our opportunity all together to celebrate your accomplishments and to close the circle to your time on campus. We are honored by the presence of our dignitaries on the platform party, members of our board of trustees, faculty, sisters of the Holy Cross, parents, grandparents, friends, and loved ones of the class of 2020. Thank you all for being here and enjoy this wonderful day. Good afternoon. I'm Gloria Jenkins. I'm the Interim Vice President for Student Affairs. Welcome back, Class of 2020. On behalf of the entire Student Affairs Division, we are delighted to have you back on campus. At this time, I want to introduce the Class of 2020 Class Council Officers. Michelle Lester, President, graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and Minors in Sociology and Business Administration. She is a rising third-year law student at the University of St. Thomas School of Law in Minneapolis and is a summer associate at Bowman and Brooke. Cassandra Augusta, Vice President, graduated with a Bachelor of Arts, Psychology and Sociology double major with a concentration in Criminology. She too is a rising third year law student at William S. Boyd School of Law in Las Vegas and is working at Clark County District Attorney's Office in their Criminal Division as the Coordinator for Kids Court School at Williams S. Boyd School of Law. At this time, it is my pleasure to welcome Michelle and Cassie up to the podium. Well, hello everyone. First, welcome back to all of our friends that we graduated with back in 2020. First, I just wanna thank my dad and my grandma who have endlessly sacrificed for me to be here and for me to go to law school. So, on behalf of all of us, we want to give thanks to everyone who made today happen. There were times when we were unsure of what this would look like, but thanks to the perseverance of this administration, especially Gloria Jenkins, Noel Warren, Michelle Egan, and everyone else who helped coordinate each event this weekend, we are finally here today. There's someone in particular that this day would feel wrong without, so we'd like to offer a special thanks to Dr. Nekfazil for flying back to South Bend to spend our graduation day with us. And as a token of our appreciation, we want to offer you a necklace, which displays a map of the United States with a heart over Indiana and a heart over Tennessee, so you can always carry St. Mary's close to your heart. Please join us in thanking Dr. Nexfacil for her years of service to this college, and especially for her return to our commencement ceremony. So by now, we've all heard the famous quote by Sister Madaleva. We promise you discovery, the discovery of yourselves, the discovery of the universe, and your place in it. We heard it when we first stepped onto campus and at various times throughout our time at St. Mary's, leaving us to wonder, what will we discover about ourselves here? Personally, I had never expected to discover resilience, but that's exactly what I discovered about myself and each one of my fellow Bells. In 2020, we went on spring break thinking about buying senior week tickets and what we'd wear to graduation, 
But when spring break ended, we were left wondering if we would ever get to return to this beautiful campus we had called home for three years. We were left to face the reality of moving on to our future careers, graduate school, or family endeavors in the middle of an unprecedented global pandemic without the comfort of a final goodbye to our beloved St. Mary's. But I found comfort in the resilience I saw in my fellow Bells. I witnessed many of us going off to graduate school, starting families, careers, having children, getting married, and I witnessed us thriving during a time that could have broken us, but it didn't, and here we gather today to celebrate us, the class of 2020, and our unwavering resilience. Oh, God. So before I begin, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge two people that are not here today. Um, graduating is a beautiful, graduating from this beautiful place is very special. And my parents would not be here today if it wasn't for my grandparents. Sorry. Um, it wasn't for my grandparents who made sure I had them here today to share this moment with them. So Sister Manaleva did promise us discovery. And there's no question that we, the class of 2020, have discovered how resilient we are. But there is another part of Sister Manaleva's words that, while not as famous, fits with our experience at St. Mary's. Sister Manaleva says, we will not promise you happiness. We will not wish you security. For we remember that security is mortal's chiefest enemy. And we know that you can be sure only when you can stand everything that can happen to you. If your school has prepared you for this, it has been a good school. The line, you can be secure only when you can stand everything that can happen to you, is what I wish for all of you to take from today. We have all seen how life will not always go as planned, but our time at St. Mary's has given us the strength we need to face life with grace and fortitude and, as per and has prepared us to overcome anything that life will throw at us. We are now two years removed from St. Mary's. We have started new chapters in our lives and we have created many more memories to cherish. But, but like another famous quote, we have always heard, the avenue will always lead you home. We have come home today to celebrate our resilience and our strength. We will never know what it would be like to have a normal senior week, a normal graduation weekend, or a normal ending to a college experience. But what we will know is that through it all, St. Mary's will always be here for us, and we will forever be bells. So as we officially close this chapter, let us remember how resilient we are. <laughs> So as we officially close this chapter, <laughs> let us remember how resilient we are, the fat sacrifices we have made, the strength we have acquired, and the women and people we have become. Good afternoon. I'm Sharon Marr, Interim Provost and Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs. I'm pleased to introduce Professor Bill Svelmo, PhD, Professor of History. Dr. Svelmo has taught at the college since 2000 and is an active member of the college community. A scholar of American religious history, Professor Svelmo earned his master's and doctorate degrees from the University of Notre Dame. He also earned his master's in divinity from Talbot 
Theological Seminary and Bachelor of Art degree from the University of California, Irvine. Professor Svelmo teaches a wide range of courses in US American history here at St. Mary's. He was awarded the Maria Pieta Award in 2012 for excellence in teaching. Professor Svelma is involved in a broad range of activities at the college, including as a faculty representative in the athletics department, and he has acted in a number of St. Mary's theater productions. <laughs> Can I take a moment and just soak this all in? <laughs> Gorgeous day. A still warm cup of coffee <laughs> and a large captive audience of students. <laughs> I am living the dream. <laughs> and the best seat I've ever had to watch you all get your degrees. My camera is going to be out, some of you. Well, you know, I was reminded this week of my, of my very first graduation at St. Mary's um, over 20 years ago. And I had a friend from graduate school who had gotten a job at a big state school. And I asked him if he was looking forward to graduation. And he said, graduation? I'm not going to graduation. I don't really know any of the students. And I was stunned. I had only been here a year, but I already would not have missed graduation for anything. To celebrate with a group of seniors who had gone out of their way to welcome me, to train me in what they expected <laughs> of a St. Mary's professor, who had made the classroom a place I very much wanted to be. I had become a member of the family. So thank you for coming back to this place. We're so glad to see you. See? <laughs> you got me going before I even got up here. We're so glad to see you, to celebrate with you, and then to say goodbye all over again. But to remind you that being gone, you are never forgotten. And now I have to apologize to our signer. I kind of went off script there, but. I'm back on script now, okay. <laughs> I realize as I looked at your pictures on our webpage that while I know some of you well, for many of you I'm extended family. Uh, that faculty member you may have heard of who wears Hawaiian shirts and flip-flops, <laughs> or the guy who can't draw maps on the board to save his life, and so some of his maps wind up on Facebook with an LOL under them. <laughs> I know who you are. Or the guy who tried to convince you that the 70s were a great decade for culture despite the big hair and the bell bottoms and the avocado green refrigerators. <laughs> I never got any of you to believe in the importance of disco. It's one of my great disappointments. <laughs> but I hope that even for those of you who don't know me, I represent teachers you have known, who have helped you along the way, whose doors have always been open, and who made the classroom a place you wanted to be. Let me talk for a minute about the good life. We were interrupted two years ago before we really got to kick this one around. My favorite Calvin and Hobbes cartoon has been on the door of my office for years. Many of you have seen it. In it, Calvin's teacher, the long-suffering Miss Wormwood, ends class by asking if there are any questions. Calvin raises his hand and asks, what's the meaning of human existence? What's the point of human existence, he asks. Miss Wormwood sighs and replies, I meant any questions about the subject at hand. And Calvin grumbler, grumbles, frankly, I'd like to have that issue resolved before I expend any more energy on this. <laughs> Calvin is both right and wrong here. He's right to raise the question. He's wrong to expect Miss Wormwood to give him his, Calvin's, answer. It's pursuing the question that leads to the good life. The good life, the wise have always alluded to it. Socrates, the unexamined life is not worth living. Irenaeus, the glory of God is a human fully alive. Henry David Thoreau, only that day dawns to which we are awake. Bono, I'm wide awake, I'm wide awake, and I'm not sleeping. The good life is the wide awake life, awake to every moment, awake to all that is going on inside. I can't tell you exactly how to achieve the good life. I can't tell you where being awake will lead. But if you want to be awake to your life, I can tell you where it begins. It begins in solitude and silence. You have graduated into a noisy, cluttered, perilous, 
at times heartbreaking world. It is hard to hear a voice, any voice, in the whirlwind. Perhaps a truism for our age is that you will not hear the voice of God on Twitter. And you will not hear your own voice. Learn to recognize your own heart if you don't step away from the noise and take time for solitude and silence. What will happen there? I don't know. I won't promise you that you'll find answers. What I will promise you is that you'll discover some important questions, the important questions. And those questions just might lead you to your authentic voice, to the meaning of your human existence. Kathleen Norris worked as an art teacher in elementary schools, and she found that silence liberated her students' imaginations. But it was hard to get third graders to go there, so she played a little game with them, and if I had more time, I would do that with you right now. When I raise my hand, she said, make all the noise you possibly can. The kids really got into that, reaching acceptable decibel levels very quickly. Part two was harder. When I lower my hand, we're going to be completely silent. Breathe normally, don't make faces, just sit very still. Norris found that after a few tries, children were able to become so still that silence became a presence in the classroom. What interests me most about my experiment, wrote Norris, is the way in which making silence, making silence, liberated the students' imaginations. Very few wrote with any originality about making noise. Most of their images were cliches, such as, we sound like a herd of elephants. But silence was another matter. One boy came up with an image of strength as being slow and silent as a tree. Another wrote that silence is me sleeping, waiting to wake up. Silence is a tree spreading its branches to the sun. One third grader's poem turned into a prayer. Silence is spiders spinning their webs. It's a silkworm making its silk. Lord, help me to know when to be silent. And in a tiny town in western North Dakota, a little girl offered this gem of spiritual wisdom. Silence reminds me to take my soul with me wherever I go. As you leave this place, remember to carve out time for silence so that you might take your soul with you wherever you go. Thank you for the privilege of sharing this moment with you. It's been a great honor. Thanks, Dr. Svelmo. I actually noted that while he was speaking, other than his voice and the birds, you really could have heard almost anything else happen. It's now my great pleasure to introduce your commencement speaker, who is certainly no stranger to this class. She might have advised you in her role as the pre-health professions advisor. You might have taken one of her classes in the biology department. But everyone here definitely remembers her as your president as you finished at St. Mary's. At last year's commencement, we offered Dr. Neckvissel, or Dr. N, an honorary degree. We honored her with that for her incredible commitment and her contributions that spanned 35 years at the college. She served in various roles throughout that time with dedication and with distinction, culminating in postponing her own retirement to serve as your interim president. As we honored her on that day last spring, I noted that she will always be remembered as someone with a rich knowledge of college history, a deep understanding of the legacy of the Sisters of the Holy Cross, and a clear sense of faculty perspective. Her leadership showed kindness and patience, as well as grit and guts. We all know the saying, first things first. And at St. Mary's, Nancy Neckvassel put students first. She believed passionately in the power of education as an engine of social and economic empowerment for women. And she used her head and her heart and her servant leadership to build community spirit on this campus. 
It's an honor to have her with us today, so I know you'll join me in giving a warm welcome back to Dr. Nancy P. Necklesol. Oh my goodness, we are here. Isn't this great? Ah! Oh. <laughs> I don't know about you, but this is completing a circle for me. Oh, wait. <laughs> a circle that has been open and dangling for two years. <laughs> When Michelle Egan from the President's office asked me to speak at this long overdue ceremony, she apologized for asking, as she said, one more thing. Can you do one more thing for St. Mary's? I told her this could not make me happier. I was elated to be able to welcome you home. <laughs> You know, I promised you all an in-person graduation two years ago, and then I left. <laughs> so I am incredibly grateful to this wonderful administration for making it happen. Thank you to the members of the Board of Trustees who are with us today, Sisters of the Holy Cross, President Katie Conboy, faculty and staff of St. Mary's College, and truly a special thank you to all who are involved in making this celebration happen. And I might add, this is not an easy thing to do two weeks after the previous commencement. So everyone deserves a gold star. Faculty and staff, thank you for honoring these graduates with your presence here today, letting them know again how much you care for them. You cared for them when they were here, you care for them still, and you're showing that by your presence here today. So I am honored to welcome each and every one of you. Family, friends who have made it a priority to be here, thank you. Thank you so much. When I spoke to you at your virtual commencement two years ago, I talked a lot also about resilience and about the rapid adjustments that you were experiencing. But I also talked with you about what you had to offer the world. I don't know if anyone remembers that. I distinctly remember standing up here with no one around but a camera, <laughs> wondering if you were actually listening or if you were in the back bedroom going, just tell me when my name's coming up <laughs> so you could run into the TV and catch that. But that's OK. I, I get that. But here we are today. And so I want to start by asking you, what has changed in the two years that you've been out? Are you on the same path you were headed when you were last on campus in 2020? Are you where you thought you would be, or are you going a completely different direction? I know that some of you have lost loved ones, and I offer you my deepest condolences. Those trials in life are very difficult. They shift us, and they change us forever. Stay strong. Some of you have produced new little human beings. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Whether you find yourself just where you thought you would be or stepping into something you never saw yourself doing two years ago, you will continue to encounter curveballs and challenges that test you to your very core because that is life. Remember that quote that Cassie was talking about the end of that quote, that a, a school is good only if it prepares you for the challenges of life. I think you've been living that truth now for a couple of years. The world is still changing and challenging us. What is it that anchors you or grounds you in a place of security or safety? Knowing that even if the world continues to shift around you, and it will, you will be okay. How do you find that place or person of comfort that enables you to pick yourself up and keep going? Or maybe more importantly, how do you reach outside yourself and find the strength to help that sister or brother 
who is having difficulty weathering the storm alone. At the 2022 commencement, two weeks ago, the valedictorian who spoke said something like, bells should be found in the places where decisions are made. I really like that message, but I want to expand on it a bit. Bells should be found in places where compassionate hearts are needed. Bells should be found in the places where ideas are shared and valued and where all voices are heard. Bells should be found where young minds are eager to learn and where neurotypically divergent individuals need an ally. Bells should be found where the marginalized need to be included and heard. I'm sure you can think of other places and other situations in which bells would change the landscape and the thinking. New ideas, passion, integrity, ethics, and ability to communicate, a voice for justice. These are the attributes that describe you. Do you know that? They describe you. It doesn't really matter if you've hit the ground running or if you had a slow start out of the gate since graduation because you have what it takes to reach your destination. You stand on the shoulders of all the St. Mary's graduates who come before you, grounded in the foundation laid by the Sisters of the Holy Cross. It is this legacy, this heritage, this indescribable thing <laughs> That happened when you attended St. Mary's, coupled with what you brought to the table six years ago. That makes you who you are today. So I'm just here to remind you that you are making a difference every day, no matter what you are doing. You are making a difference. Just a couple of weeks ago, a woman by the name of Elizabeth Ronker, who is described as a nonverbal autistic, graduated as valedictorian from Rollins College and delivered a commencement address from the podium with a recorded voice, because she could not speak, that read her words, words that encouraged her classmates to be the light. She wrote her speech by typing with one finger on a keyboard held by her communication helper. That was an accomplishment in itself since she cannot tie her own shoes nor button her own buttons due to her neuromotor deficits. But I'm mentioning her because we can all be the light no matter where we are or who we are. Acts of serving and blessing really cost us nothing. I also want to share with you something from self-help author and motivational speaker Wayne Dyer. And some of you may have heard some of this before. Quote, you are holding your cup of coffee when someone comes along and bumps into you, causing you to spill your coffee everywhere. Why did you spill your coffee, someone asks. And you answer, well, because someone bumped into me. But you spilled the coffee because there's coffee in the cup. Had there been tea in the cup, you would have spilled tea. The point is that whatever is inside the cup will spill out. So when life shakes you, and it will, whatever is inside of you will come out. So the question is, what is in your cup? When life gets tough, what spills out? Joy, appreciation, love, acceptance, or hostility, anger, judgment, or exhaustion? In the book of Proverbs, that was end quote. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 12, it says, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. I asked you earlier where you find your anchor when life tosses you about. If you're not sure, just look within. Occupying that same space as the contents of that cup, you will find those strengths that you draw on. And you can choose what's there. Again, forgiveness, joy, words of affirmation for others, gratitude, kindness. Your strength to weather life 
whatever comes your way, is grounded in a heart that seeks to love others well. So for all of us here today, let's make a choice to be different from the world. Let's let love cover all offenses, no matter what we face tomorrow or next year or the year after that. Yes, bells belong where light and healing are needed. May you continue to discover and hone your gifts so you can be a light to those around you and be part of the healing that is so desperately needed in our world today. Congratulations, class of 2020, again. (laughs) Thank you, Dr. Nekfazo. President Comboy, I present to you members of the class of 2020 who earned their degrees in that year. The faculty of St. Mary's College certified that they fulfilled all the requirements for their particular degrees and their diplomas were delivered to them by post. (laughs) I ask that you, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and with the recommendation of the faculty, Now recognize each degree recipient today as a public acknowledgement of their accomplishments and degree earned. In May 2020, a few days before the virtual ceremony, graduates received their diploma covers with a beautiful print of Le Mans Hall, which served as a placeholder until the official diploma arrived. This print was created specifically for this class, and today they will receive a print of a similar design made to mark this unique and special day. Good afternoon. My name is Tracy White, and I am the Senior Academic Advisor here at St. Mary's College. I have the distinct pleasure of reading the names of all of the graduates today. Graduates, as you return to your seat, a photographer will take a photo of you. Audience, out of respect for each graduate, please hold your applause until all of the names for each degree have been read so that everyone may hear their name as it is announced. The degree of Doctor of Nursing Practice is conferred upon Erin Nicole Paulette, Family Nurse Practitioner. Jessica Lynn Rizzo, Family Nurse Practitioner. The degree of Master of Science is conferred upon Rachel Ann Willing, Speech Language Pathology. The degree of Bachelor of Arts is conferred upon Cassandra Acosta, Psychology, Sociology, Summa Cum Laude. Nicole Ann Agarwal, Sociology, Communication Studies, Summa Cum Laude, and Co-Valedictorian. Allison Yvonne Alberts, English Literature, Secondary Education. Marta Antonetti, Political Science. Ariana Miranda Ariaga, English Literature, Spanish. Elizabeth Barrett, Philosophy, SDM Organizational Studies, Behavior and Management, Cum Laude. 
Emma Christine Bodwin, Elementary Education. Olivia Bentley, ISDM, advocate, Advocating for Social Justice. Alexia Renee Calderon, Global Studies. Tatiana Castilleja, Sociology, Communication Studies. Mary Eloise Coleman, Political Science, Humanistic Studies. Magna Cum Laude. Claire Conlin, Speech Language Pathology, Summa Cum Laude. Janie Wahusha Davis, Philosophy. Natalie Ann Davis, English Literature and Writing, Gender and Women's Studies in absentia. Anisia El Sayed Awad, Global Studies. Caitlin Jade Emmett, English Literature and Writing, Magna Cum Laude. Hannah McBride Etzcorn. Psychology, magna, or excuse me, cum laude and in absentia. Elizabeth Ferry, History, Humanistic Studies, magna cum laude. Amanda Rosemary Fisher, Communication Studies, cum laude. Guadalupe Garcilazo, Spanish Secondary Education, Cum Laude. Kara Joyce Gargan, Elementary Education, Magna Cum Laude. Caitlin Gibbs, Elementary Education, Spanish, Summa Cum Laude. Maura Catherine Gillig, Speech Language Pathology, Magna Cum Laude. Anastasia Gomez, Philosophy. Megan Garalchek, Political Science, History. Stephanie Erin Goyette, Psychology, Summa Cum Laude. Mary Catherine Florence Graziano, Communication Studies. Madeline McKenna Greeley, Communication Studies. Madeline Marie Green, Psychology. Audrey Lynn Jolai, Philosophy. Darby Lee Harcourt, Environmental Studies, in absentia. Sarah Lauren Hotzinger, Sociology, Summa Cum Laude and Co-Valedictorian. Magdalena Hernandez, Spanish. Bridget Lenore Therese Herod, Religious Studies. Jasmine Abigail Herrera, Sociology. Woo! 
Anastasia Marie Height, Sociology, Magna Cum Laude. Sabrina Ann Hollis, Psychology, Cum Laude. Claire Michelle Holman, Computing and Applied Mathematics. Savannah Jackson, History. Alexis Jacobs, Physics. Allison Riley Jones, Communication Studies in Absentia. Sophie Marguerite Kaminsky, History. Carissa Kennedy, English Literature. Jalen King, History, Secondary Education. Emily Klepper, Mathematics, Magna Cum Laude. Isabella Crocky, Speech Language Pathology, Cum Laude. Courtney Rose Crochelle, Economics, Summa Cum Laude. Madison Nancy Lee, Psychology, Magna Cum Laude. Michelle Ann Lester, Political Science. Mi On Lu, Psychology. Ann McGuire, Global Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Alexandra Arlene Makrovich, Elementary Education, Cum Laude. Bobby Gina Mamalente, Speech Language Pathology. Sophia McDevitt, Religious Studies, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Kathleen Marita Mead, Elementary Education. Grace Catherine Milligan, Psychology, Magna Cum Laude. Haley Margaret Mitchell, Speech Language Pathology. Mary Elizabeth Moyer, Psychology, Magna Cum Laude. Colleen Lauren Murphy, Elementary Education, Cum Laude. Sarah Elizabeth Nation, Speech Language Pathology, Magna Cum Laude. Tara Marie Nelson, Elementary Education. Jesse Nguyen, Environmental Studies, Cum Laude. Anne Therese Nowak, Communication Studies. Jessica Ostrowska, Global Studies. Elise Marie Paul, Communication Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Woo! 
Nicole Agnes Plager, Elementary Education. Nicole Marie Papo, Psychology. <laughs> Kayla Elizabeth Powers, Psychology. Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Madison Jane Pyle, Religious Studies. Olivia Grace Rake, Psychology Cum Laude. Amanda Wrench, Speech Language Pathology, Summa Cum Laude. Delaney Marie Rollman, Elementary Education, Cum Laude. Francis Tobin Doherty Schroeder, Economics, Magna Cum Laude. Elizabeth Ann Schubert, Elementary Education, Summa Cum Laude. Olivia Sension, Art, In Absentia. Kirsten Sherman, Computing and Applied Mathematics, Theater. Sheridan Ann Sims, Communication Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Abigail Francis Smedley, Elementary Education. Mary Grace Stecksholte, Elementary Education. <laughs> Joanna Stephanie Stokey Toyu, Speech Language Pathology, Spanish, Summa Cum Laude. Elizabeth Marie Stockwell, Speech Language Pathology. Magna Cum Laude. Rebecca Suzanne Strom, English Writing, Humanistic Studies, Summa Cum Laude. Taylor Shannon Strong, Communication Studies, Cum Laude. Libby Rose Tierney, Communication Studies. Elizabeth Sandra Tijano, History. Mary Therese Trainer, Communication Studies, Cum Laude. Georgia Turvey, Spanish, Cum Laude. Gina Tuardos, English Writing, Communication Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Samantha Underly, Communication Studies. Taryn Van Horn, Communication Studies, Psychology. Lauren Mackenzie Vanisacker, Elementary Education, Summa Cum Laude. Mallory Magdalene Van Overberg, Psychology, Cum Laude. Tennessee's Vasquez, Gender and Women's Studies.
Cameron Verducci, Communication Studies. Catherine Marie Viz, Humanistic Studies, History. Mary Elizabeth Wandor, Economics. Valerie Renee Zaychek, History. Alexa Zapata Fernandez, Psychology, in absentia. Anna Zappa, Environmental Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Lucille Zeiger, Elementary Education, Cum Laude, in absentia. Lauren Marie Zanani, Psychology, Magna Cum Laude. The degree of Bachelor of Business Administration is conferred upon Brooklyn Page Beltron, Business Administration. Sarah Ann Brown, Accounting, Magna Cum Laude. Claire Eileen Carraher, Accounting. Cum Laude. <laughs> Jocelyn Elizabeth Carrasco, Accounting. <laughs> Maggie Elizabeth Cloud, Business Administration, Cum Laude. Courtney Michelle Driscoll, Business Administration, in absentia. Camilla Edwards, Business Administration, Economics. Mary Claire Freeman, Business Administration, Economics. Emma Patterson Friend. Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude. Woo! Molly Malone Galvin, Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude. Woo! Mara Francis Conry Hart, Business Administration, Cum Laude. Riley Edith Hoy, Business Administration. Grace Hillman, Business Administration. Chloe Jacobs, Business Administration, Cum Laude. Halen Dracovic, Business Administration. Clara Faith Judge, Business Administration, Cum Laude. Elizabeth Caspers, Business Administration, Cum Laude. Noelle Caris Keen, Accounting, Cum Laude. Bridget Ann Kelly, Business Administration, Economics, Cum Laude. Megan Elizabeth Lagore, Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude.
<laughs> Marissa Martinez, Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude. Anna Stacia Mason, Business Administration, Cum Laude. Lucia Catherine O'Quinn, Business Administration. Allison Ann Page, Accounting, Cum Laude. Olivia Profiter, Business Administration, Economics, Cum Laude. Kennedy Kaylin Richardson, Business Administration, Summa Cum Laude. Mary Kate Ritchie, Business Administration. Gabrielle Solera, Accounting. Christina Sara, Business Administration. Anna Smagala, Accounting. Jessica Snyder, Business Administration, Cum Laude. Diana Laura Soto. Accounting, Spanish, cum laude. Sophia Elizabeth Swales, Business Administration. Laura Taylor, Business Administration. Leticia Torres, Gaetan, Business Administration, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Catherine Ann Vicenzi, Business Administration, Cum Laude. <laughs> Alexis Danielle Vitone, Business Administration, Cum Laude, in absentia. Shi Yi Wong, Accounting, Economics, Cum Laude. <laughs> Mia Washington, Business Administration, Cum Laude. <laughs> Hannah Wilson, Accounting, Cum Laude. The degree of Bachelor of Music is conferred upon Shannon Patricia, excuse me, Shannon Patricia Hack, Music Education, Cum Laude. <laughs> the degree of Bachelor of Science is conferred upon Anna Victoria Babiak. Biology, Secondary Education, Magna Cum Laude. Yeah. Hannah Noel Baxter, Computing and Applied Mathematics, Cum Laude. Gabrielle Jean Beach, Physics, Magna Cum Laude. Margaret Mary Benjamin, Chemistry, Summa Cum Laude. Mary Margaret Brandt, Statistical and Actuarial Mathematics, Magna Cum Laude. Go, 
Alana Natalie Cizakowski, Mathematics. <laughs> Kathleen Margaret Holleran, Physics. Cassidy Michaela Jungles, Biology, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Emma Helene Kelly, Chemistry, Cum Laude. <laughs> Madeline Judith Lamb, Chemistry. Cum Laude. Caitlin Marie Long, Chemistry. Jordan Lee Marsman, Biology, Cum Laude. Madeline Beatrice Mock. Biology. <laughs> Lauren Olivia McGovern, Physics, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Abigail Kimberly Moose, Mathematics. Andrea Alejandra Ruiz Montoya, Chemistry. <laughs> Molly Page Ryan, Computing and Applied Mathematics, Philosophy. <laughs> Mariana Sanchez, Biology. Sophia Jiun Sim, Biology, Cum Laude. Anna Kathleen Smircheck, Computing and Applied Mathematics. <laughs> Chiara Marie Smarada, Chemistry. Magna cum laude in absentia. Hannah Marie Tanzos, biology, summa cum laude. Macy Thompson, mathematics. Bella Scarlett Tillman, biology, Spanish. Cameron Marie Yerga, Biology, Cum Laude. The degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing is conferred upon Nicole Bora, Magna Cum Laude. Maria Elisabetta Sheravino. Caitlin Ann Clifford. Megan Catherine Cooer, Magna Cum Laude. Bridget. Diane Delaney, in absentia. Nicole Ehart, in absentia. Megan Kelly Feldmeyer.
<laughs> Rose Catherine Fialkowski, cum laude in absentia. Madeline Elizabeth Gallagher, cum laude. Karen Garcia Montoya, magna cum laude. Kelly Patricia Golden. Catherine Claire Hansen, cum laude. Emma Ibera, cum laude. Kelsey Kyleman, magna cum laude. Kayla Rose Kanapke. Danielle Heather Knowlton, with a second major in Spanish. <laughs> Tara Marie Lewitsky. Nicolette Catherine Lebron. Madeline Malloy Nettleton. <laughs> Teresa Niehaus, cum laude. Caitlin Elizabeth Pulowski, cum laude, in absentia. Alexis Marie Polara. <laughs> Riley McCall Recker. Kerrigan Schmidt, cum laude. Mary Catherine Selvagy. Lucille Reich Semler. Erica Wright, in absentia. The degree of Bachelor of Social Work is conferred upon Alexandria Baylock. Marie Kelleher Burke. Amate Maite Campbell. Jillian Elizabeth Daney. Megan Elizabeth Drole, magna cum laude. Carrie Ann Dwyer, magna cum laude. Grace Irving. Austin Marie Fritz Gerald, cum laude.
for her second degree, Magdalena Hernandez. <laughs> Olivia Ann Lathers. For her second degree, Sophia McDevitt, summa cum laude. <laughs> Margaret Kathleen McKinnon. <laughs> Catherine Emily Niles, magna cum laude. For her second degree, Georgia Turvey, cum laude. <laughs> Catherine Dower Wonkelman, with a second major in gender and women's studies, magna cum laude. <laughs> and we made it through with no planes overhead. Wow, I'm kind of choked up and I wasn't even here. <laughs> but I'm really glad to be here today and I'm really glad to be here with all of you. So the last thing we generally do before the little ceremonial close of our, of our uh, commencement is for the president to give a charge to the class. And since your president has already spoken to you, I'm going to give a charge to the class and I thank you for letting me be here with you to do that. I'm convinced 2020 grads, even though I didn't go through your years at St. Mary's with you, that you brought many talents and gifts when you came here. And during your time here, you shared those gifts with the community. You participated in discussions inside and outside the classroom. You performed in O'Loughlin and the Little Theater. You played on athletic fields and courts, and you presented research projects, led clubs and organizations, and worked with local community partners. You sharpened your thinking, honed your craft, developed your practice, you built muscle memory, explored your beliefs. You were open to change, to that special magic that happens in the classroom, the studio, the laboratory, the chapel, the clinic, the theater, the playing fields, all those sacred spaces of this campus and the surrounding community. This work has made St. Mary's proud, and I hope it's made you proud. You've grown and developed during your journey here. And if you learned only one thing when you were at St. Mary's, I hope it's that we can make our lives greater than ourselves, that all those talents and skills that are uniquely yours are actually your gifts to the world. When you give those gifts away generously, you'll find you somehow have more of them to give. And if you learned a second thing while you were at St. Mary's, it's that at a momentous event like this, somebody, and maybe more than one somebody, is going to quote our famous poet president, <laughs> Sister Madeleva Wolf. I know you see her words about discovery everywhere on campus, and obviously Michelle and Cassie referred to those words in their remarks, and Dr. Neckbissell echoed them as well. But you know, Sister Madaliva said a whole lot of wise things that aren't quoted as often as that one. And I thought you might like to hear what she told alumni when they returned to campus for a reunion in 1959. I was one. Your own futures, she said, so full of promise and expectation, all ride at anchor for the moment here, but only for the moment. Life bears you out to sea on many tides, on diverse and conflicting currents. 
And then Sister Madaliva reflects on one of the great works of Western literature, the Aeneid, in which the central character literally ships out into the unknown. And these are her words. Aeneas, fleeing from his home with his father and little son, carrying his household gods over tempestuous waters to a strange new world. The word new has double significance. The Latin shores which received Aeneas were new to him. But reciprocally, he brought to them a new vitality, a whole new culture. This is the journey, the mission, of every college graduate everywhere, always, to bear the vitalities of youth to a world awaiting them. Those were Sister Madaliva's words, to bear the vitalities of youth to a world awaiting them. Bear your vitality to a world awaiting you. This is my charge to the graduates, and I know you, class of 2020, are already out there doing it. When Sister Madaliva made those remarks over 60 years ago, it was in the context of reflecting on the phrase alma mater. As graduates, you're already calling all, uh, St. Mary's your alma mater, which literally translates as generous mother. Sister Madaliva called it the mother of your mind. And I think her words about new worlds resonate in new ways in our increasingly global society, in a world of deeply linked cultures where you are finding new and unexpected shores, whether you've moved to the next town or halfway across the world. Like everyone else who's spoken to you today, I am sure today is bittersweet. But I hope that by the time you leave, you're feeling more sweet than bitter. You're finally back on campus for an occasion you've awaited for just far too long. And yet, you recognize that you've already started your next chapter. In some ways, you're getting both a commencement and a mini reunion all in one. No class will ever have the same experience you had that abrupt and complete interruption of what should have been your culminating shining moment. Indeed, two years later, just look around at how many of you are actually here, <laughs> eager to have this time together to acknowledge your college trials and triumphs and to bring closure to those years with real celebration. So graduates, I hope you have taken what you've learned here and embarked on your individual journeys to make a difference in the world. You may be doing this in small ways or in large ones. You may be doing it in local or in global contexts. Keep raising your voices with civility and a spirit of dialogue in any space that requires it. Keep creating community in your personal and professional worlds. Keep working for justice. Lift up the marginalized and walk with those who need your solidarity. Embrace new challenges and new opportunities. Keep stretching, keep growing, and as Dr. Svelmo suggested, look more for questions than for answers. In short, bear your vitalities to a world awaiting you. I hope you continue to have great discoveries wherever the tides and currents of life take you, and also that those tides bring you back often to St. Mary's, your alma mater. Thank you. This ceremony will end with the recession. The stage party will exit first and students will follow. Students will end the recession in front of the Student Center, back over there. <laughs> Audience members, please remain in your seats until the recession is complete. Otherwise, everybody gets kind of gunked up over there. So please stay where you are at. Everyone is welcome to the reception after the ceremony in the Cushwell Layton Library. But first, will the graduates please stand and sing the Bells of St. Mary's, led by Brianna Kinyanjui. Oh, bells of 
St. Mary's, we always will love you with your inspiration. We never will fail. Your chimes will forever bring sweet memories of you. So proudly we now proudly sing for you. St. Mary, St. Mary's, we hear your voice calling, your old girls, your young girls, the girls who love best, to you all, my mother, with beauty and thrilling, we bring our hearts, we sing our